one of the quickest ways to figure out that you're dealing with a serpent is if this person sells the idea of scarcity. So let me explain. Like, you know, maybe two, two three serpents ago that I encountered, uh, this guy, he would always talk about scarcity. Like, he, he's always trying to sell you that idea. He would always bring up, like, those statistics, like, oh, every American in an emergency, they couldn't come up with $500, which is, even if it's true, great, I don't care, but he would always bring that up. He always tried to plant the seeds of uh, scarcity. Because you see, when a serpent always plants those seeds of scarcity before they try to negotiate a deal with you. Because they, they want it to seem like resources are scarce and the deal that they offer you is the best deal for you. Does that make sense? So they always, they, they, they love to teach scarcity. And, you know, like, I don't believe in scarcity. Like, I just believe people create it. Like, you know, these serpents, they, the illusion is what creates it. But I, I don't believe in scarcity. Like, I believe that there is enough resources on earth for every man, woman, and child, and kid to live in a house the size of the White House. Like, I, I truly believe that. There's plenty of resources for everybody. And when you believe in scarcity, I don't believe the law of attraction nonsense, but what I do believe is that if you inwardly absolutely believe in scarcity, outwardly you will attract it. Does that make sense? Like where, because you're defeated internally. You're like, oh, there, there's, there's nothing for me, so I'll, I'll accept any deal because beggars can't be choosers. No. Don't believe in scarcity. Believe in abundance. And again, it's not. I'm not teaching you law of attraction or any of that. I'm just saying there's a reason why the serpent teaches that. Okay. And just don't accept it. It's not real. And like the the best, you know. Let's talk about acts of war that the serpent uses against you. To play, put it plain and simply, like, it's theft. Theft is an all-encompassing word. Like, if you... I believe that uh, the, only, the only sin is theft. Like, think about it. You break any of the Ten Commandments, what are you doing? You're committing a form of theft. Go through all ten of them. Think about it. Lying is theft, cheating is theft, stealing is theft. Uh, you're, you're, you're taking, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all theft. Worshiping other gods instead of the Most High God, that's a form of theft, you see, because we've talked about in the last video. Tails are the only people that deny that God exists. Every head in the world knows there's a God. That's why... You're always seeing reports of people high up in government and, you know, they'll worship like Moloch and Baal and, you know, Freemasons. Al Albert Pike revealed that they worship Lucifer, but they only reveal that fact once you're no longer a tail. Once you become like a third, 33rd degree Mason, then they tell you the truth. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all plain and simple. It's all, it's all in front of us. Like... If you know what to look for, you can see all this stuff for yourself. But, yeah, I mean, theft. If anybody tries to commit theft towards you, that's a serpent. Whether it's your labor, whether it's anything. Teaching you scarcity, that's a form of theft. That's why the biggest theft thieves out there are people. The mainstream media. Because they teach nothing but fear, lies... You know, they sow seeds of scarcity, you know, they're always talking about war, you know, they're overreacting about this, that, and the other. That's all theft. You understand? You have to be aware of these things. And the way you counter these tactics is you learn the truth. You see, like, they always build a narrative around, like, even... All their, like, 
you can, I, I hate saying this, but you almost have to assume everything that the mainstream runs with is a long con. You understand? Like, it's not, at face value, you're not getting what they're, you're not getting the truth. We talked about in previous videos how in the 1960s, the Rockefellers funded the women's rights movement. At face value, that's a beautiful thing. But the truth is that they were conspiring to take the dollar off the gold standard. Um, and they knew that the currency was going to inflate over time. The purchasing power, everything. You can charts prove all of this. That this happened. So they needed two incomes in a household instead of just one. Because before then, one, one income in a household supported the whole family. So they, yeah, they funded the women's rights movement, um, which again, at face value is a beautiful thing, but it was because they were committing theft, the long con, you, you understand? They were stealing your purchasing power from your currency, and then you have to work more hours to get less stuff. Yeah, that's evil. That's the long con, you understand? So, you know... Do your own research, do, do your own discernment, but look into, fill in the blank yourself. You're all smart. Everyone that listens to this broadcast is smart. You're, t you're top tier, tip of the spear, badasses. You understand? Uh, yeah, think about why they're they're selling this, you know, climate change thing, or this, uh, you know, there's all these news headlines that we see daily. Why? why? Think about the long con. Think about what they did in the 60s. And look at where we're at now. You know, 50 something years later. Now we know why. But you you won't know when you're when you know when they're sowing the seeds. So yeah. That's a little bit of homework for you. Uh yeah, I'm driving home from work. I've been working nonstop for the last five weeks. I'm super tired. I uh yeah, average of 12 hour days. I was doing 18 hour days to the first week. And then now it's down to like 14, 12s, 14s, but it's really intense labor. So I'm tired. I would be making more of these, but yeah. Um, talk to you soon.